interesting move now by Mike Schiller, Fernando Martin coming into the ball game, who almost never plays. Martin only plays usually about six minutes a game, if that. Often doesn't play at all. He's played at Club Real Madrid, rookie in the NBA. Parrish with five personal fouls. 110-98 Celtics, 625 to go. 12-point lead. Portland still in there. Of course, the pace of this game has slowed down tremendously. For three, this is this one. Bird steals it. You can see it coming, and look at the pass to McHale. Oh. Great players to ever play the game. He has such court sense and awareness. It reminds you so much of, of Magic Johnson's that we pointed out in our last ball game. Both of them are brilliant. Jump hook by Duckworth. Actually, a duck hook. <laughs> you were waiting all night for that, Bob. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Celtics by 12 with 5.48 to go. Usually your duck hooks are on the fairway. <laughs> you got that right. Bird off the screen. It's stripped away by Vandaway, but controlled by Parrish. Ainge wisely found the open Dennis Johnson. And the Celtics continually put on a clinic. The team play, ball movement, finding the open man, rebounding. Well, if you learn the game the way it was supposed to be played, you can't help but love playing for the Celtics. Curry with another great defensive effort. It's three on two. What a pass to aim. Oh, the Celtics operating like surgeons now. 116-100. 5-10 to go in the ball game. This is one of those nights. The Celtics played like this against Golden State last night. George Carl at Golden State said, I don't know what we could have done to stop them. They were just, everything they did was right. It looks that way again tonight. And now when they smell blood, they get even worse. Oh, boy. By 18, Boston, timeout, Portland, 4.52 to go in this ball game. Now, this is why Larry Bird has been the MVP three consecutive years. Good rebound by Vandeweghe, makes the mistake, keeping it over his head. Bird strips it away, hits the deck going for it. Now, look at the court vision he has in the sense to get the ball to McHale for the easy stuff. Now the drive by Porter on the good fake Bird comes in the weak side defense off of Martin. Again, he strips it away. Sees Ainge on the breakaway, the perfect lead pass. Danny stretched out totally with the ball in perfect position. Another assist for Bird. He's got double figures in that department. Larry Bird showing you why he does not have to score points to be the great player that he is. And now Boston with some wholesale changes. Connor Henry, number 43, in guarding Drexler right now. Sam Benson into the ball game along with Fred Roberts. Here's Duckworth scoring from the baseline. Kevin Duckworth's a good offensive player, Rick. I've been impressed by the way that he moves out in the court. Uh, he's another one of those players. Kind of reminds you of Charles Barkley, a bigger version. You wouldn't think could move like he can, but he does an excellent job moving out there. Celtics by 16 with 4.24 remaining in the game. McHale, one point away from his season high. He has 37. And of course, Drexler now is, as you say, back in the ball game. And may have been here with the two late. And away, keeps it alive, takes it back up, battles it in. One and a foul, none coming. Vandeweghe, by the way, is only 7 of 22 shooting in this game. And Paxson, we talked about him struggling. He's actually 4 of 12, which is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just speak your mind. Vincent into McHale. Way down, Paxson. 16-point Celtics lead. Hey, listen, Martin I, couldn't have. I've had enough of those myself to know. That's awful. <laughs> We were talking about Friday the 13th. It struck Portland. The designated Friday the 13th unlucky person on our crew, though, is our graphics coordinator, Jeff Binky. He's uh, missed his airplane. Uh, he uh, lost his luggage. Talked to six different airlines. Vincent, Vincent rattles it in. Oh, an offensive foul against Vincent. No yes. basket. That's right. Crashed into Duckworth. I don't, I don't know how unfortunate he is. I think we're unfortunate because he hasn't changed his clothes in a couple of days. Well, the good news is they found one of his three pieces of luggage. Let's hope it's the one with the fresh clothes. Otherwise, we're sending him to the Oregon Mountains. That's about where he smells like he's from now. <laughs> and, and to make it worse, his graphics equipment broke down just before the game. So it's truly Friday the 13th for the Trailblazers and Jeff Banky. Hang in there, Jeff. 16 point Celtics lead, 3.22 to go in the game. Band away. Can't get it to fall, but he'll go to the line. Connor Henry, uh, Sam Vincent, now Rick Carlisle, Darren Day, and Fred Roberts are the Celtics lineup as those Celtics veterans 
get a rest. One of the reasons they're only having to play 30, 35 minutes these days is they're getting these big leads. And remember, this is the third road game of an eight-game, 12-day road trip for the Celtics. They're going to be 3-0 and on the road. There's Greg Kite coming back in. Kite has uh, five fouls on him. And Vandaway. Vandaway's... Uh, 18 points below his average. He's averaging 26.46 in the NBA. Well, Portland, of course, needs to get outstanding performances from all of their players to ever have a chance to beat the Boston Celtics. They did not get that this evening. And, and I don't think we can overemphasize the absence of Kenny Carr from the Trailblazers with his bad back. He really hurts him. He provides that inside muscle. He couldn't have stopped McHale either. <laughs> However, day off the bat. Stolen by Connor Henry. There's a with a fadeaway. Veteran's not afraid to put it up, Bob. <laughs> Connor Henry, number 43, you see on the left side there from Cal Santa Barbara. So he's six, seven, good shooter. Was with the Rockets. Celtics like it. Drexler off balance. Garbage time. 231 to go in the game. Now, you know, Bob, but that's what it should not turn into. If the players who are in the game are smart, they should go out there and try to execute their offense, play good, smart basketball, just like that. A good cut, nice pass, battle on the boards. And they're going to have a foul inside. You have to do that because it's, if a guy who's not getting in the game at all, you've got to try and find a way to earn the respect of the coach to try and get some more playing time. Kevin Duckworth with a foul. That's not on Martin. It was on Duckworth. Could have been on either one of them. They called it on double zero. Kevin, who has his uh, third personal foul in the ballgame. Here's that Celtics bench. They, you know, usually after the after the five starters, you've got two or about three players on the Celtics who play about 13, 14 minutes a game, then about uh, three more who play about five or six minutes. Darren Day. Darren Day. 122-106 Celtics. Minute 58 to go in the ball game. Fernando Martin from Spain. Duckworth. Nice touch. I like the way he's coming along. And he's down to a svelte 280 pounds also. Someone said he could stand to lose about 10, 15 more pounds. There We've been waiting. We've been Henry. waiting all season for him to hit one of those. So I could say he looks like a young Rick Perry. 6'7". <laughs> Good outside shooter. And we have a 20-second timeout with the Celtics leading 125-108. And uh, as I said before about uh, Connor Henry, the Celtics liked him. Red Arbach liked him when he was down in Houston. Houston let him go. The Celtics jumped all they over that. let Craig Elo go, and he's doing well for Cleveland. Be sure to tune in this Sunday night at 11 Eastern time for the sports page. Charlie Neal and Nick Charles review the week in sports every Sunday night at 11 on the Superstation. They'll have a recap of the Daytona 500 and HL All-Stars versus the Soviets. Some highlights from that meet, plus the U.S. Olympic Invitational Track Meet. That'll all be on the sports page at 11 Eastern time this coming Sunday night. I wanted to get back to Kevin Duckworth for a second, Rick, if I could. Uh, Duckworth uh, came from San Antonio, and as he's, he's moving into playing time, they said... Paxson gets hammered and loses ball. And here comes Connor Henry. We'll come back to that. Carlisle. Blocked by Martin. And there's Kite to jam at home. Somebody said he needs to lose 10 or 15 more pounds, but they don't know who they can get to tell him. <laughs> Vandaway. Vandaway just really hurting tonight from the field. Darren Day. 129-108. The Celtic Reserve showing you that they know how to run the break as well. Kevin McHale out of there. He's going to be one point below. He has 37. His season high is 38. No! Okay. He walked. It was stripped away. They'll go to the free throw line. And the sellout crowd now filing out of here. Stay with us following tonight's game for Charlie Neal. He'll have the latest scores. And, of course, our Miller Lite player of the game selected by yours truly and Rick Barry. It seems to me that it's pretty obvious who the player of the game is. Would you agree, Rick? Kite has fouled out of the ball game. Yes, it's, I would think not, so. It's not Greg. No. <laughs> Larry Bird has finished the game in terms of scoring with 22 points, which is below Larry's average. Nine rebounds and 11 assists. He was just a couple of rebounds away from having a triple-double. But Kevin McHale with 37 points. Going to be 
tough to uh, be rid of. Well, he's the man that caused so many problems for the, the, the Portland Trailblazers ball club. Of course, Larry having another outstanding ball game as players who play an entire career and never have a line like Larry's had in this ball game. And for him, uh, it's really not a line that's uh, anything above what you're accustomed to seeing him do. Nine points for Duckworth in the game. For three from long, long range is Michael Holton. He's another one of those that trio from UCLA. Day and Holton and Vandaway, when Vandaway was a senior, played with these Day and Holton as freshmen. I see Joseph is watching him now. He gave it a, a hand to Ronnie Nunn for making the call on the foul on that one. <laughs> he better not do it too loudly because he already have one technical that cost him uh, a few hundred dollars extra. Celtics lead at 129, 110, 50 seconds remaining in this ball game. These two teams only play twice a year. We talked about the really excellent matchup between the two, but tonight it just didn't turn out that way because the matchup problem with Mikhail that everybody has is proved to be the same. That's going to be disallowed. It was interfered with on the cylinder. Basket interference won't count. It'll be Portland ball. So Roberts does not get the basket. Fred Roberts out of Brigham Young. Three BYU players on this Boston team. Ainge. Guy, uh, Kite and Fred Roberts. Percy fouled as he drives. So Portland with a 30 and 20 mark will go to 30 and 21. Portland trailing the Los Angeles Lakers by seven games in the Pacific Division in second place. Lakers were losing by one in the third quarter last we checked at Los Angeles against Indiana. It'll be interesting to see the Celtic team when we have them Thursday night against the Houston Rockets who continue to play good basketball despite the fact that Ralph Sampson uh, is out with that knee injury. Of course, anytime you have a Kim Olajuwon in the middle, uh, you're going to be a team to be reckoned with, but they're sneaking up in the, uh, in the standings there in the Midwest. Uh, Houston's won seven out of the last ten, won three in a row. They have a record of 26 and 22, only five games behind Dallas. We'll see how well they're playing, however, when they play the Celtics Thursday night. It's Connor Henry just launched that one from outside the three-point line after the whistle. He can really shoot. Won't count, of course. Well, of course, he and, uh, and Craig Elo are two other examples of players who found the right team to be with, being the right place at the right time. Henry dishes, Henry dishes off to Carlisle with 14 seconds to go in the ball game, and the Blazers have 100 and guess how many points on this Friday the 13th. I was hoping that was going to be one so I could say 15. We have a foul that's going to be against Boston. Oh, and Lawson, the Celtics four seconds have left. 131, so there's a 13 at the beginning of that and a 13 at the end of the Blazers. <laughs> and Will Chamberlain wore 13. And <laughs> oh, my. There are no 13s here tonight, though, fortunately. Hope, hope all of you folks have had a safe Friday the 13th. Oh, there. I feel better already with Percy making it 100. Well, Fred Roberts was 31, which is 13 backwards. <laughs> Duckworth got the rebound and banked it in off the glass. Duckworth now with 11 points in this game. And that's the end of the ball game, mercifully, as the Boston Celtics are 3 and 0 on this road trip, 131 to 116. We'll be back with our player of the game, but after these messages, you'll get a recap on all the NBA scores from our studios in Atlanta with Charlie Neal.